At this time, we have uh, two members from the Laverne, newly created Laverne Civil Air Patrol, Angel Berenda and Dalton Hills. Uh, fellas, if you want to come on up here, everybody face the flag. They're going to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. And while these two are up here, uh, we want to thank Mr. Earl Garvey, Jr. We are now starting a civil <coughs> air patrol unit right here in Laverne, Tennessee. They'll be starting, be recognized. Uh, February the 13th. So everyone who has young men and women that are interested, this is an awesome program. Please see uh, Mr. Garvin and he can tell you how to participate in that program. Thank you. All right. I need a motion to approve or to deny the January 3rd, 2012 regular meeting minutes. Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Department reports, fire. Mayor, Autumn, for the month of January 2012, we had a total of 66 calls, consisted of three structure fires, 19 fire alarms, two vehicle fires, four grass fires, 16 motor vehicle accidents, 11 medical calls, eight emergency miscellaneous calls, and three non-emergency miscellaneous calls. The average response time for the month of January 2012 was 2.9 minutes. The total water consumption for the same month was 2,150 gallons. Any questions? Any questions? No, ma'am. Good job. Thank you very much. Police. Mayor Alderman, one of the things discussed in the workshop was the number of animal calls. We actually had 17 animal calls in January of this year compared to 19 last year. That's a slight decrease, but we still had 17. You know, that was a pretty good topic of discussion, so that's informational. Uh, you've heard me talk time and time again about uh, our domestic calls. Our domestic calls in January rose from 23 last January to 50 this year. Now, our overall calls decreased, uh, uh, to be honest with you, about 1,000, but you've got to understand those calls for service in the CAD that we have today uh, indicates anything and everything that's done. There's a number assigned to so many things that are not actually incidents themselves. Uh, for example, a bolo or be on the lookout. Uh, there, were, there were 12 of those in the month, and that's just one of the things that's added in. Our offenses reported. Uh, to us decreased, decreased from 267 uh, to 255 and the, the largest decrease there was our um, burglaries. Our burglaries uh, reported at residences decreased from 28 to 11 and the business burglaries decreased from 4 to 1. So as I discussed in the, the workshop, I won't go back and, and go back through all of that. Um, I will tell you that our arrests were down by six, but uh, most of that was the result of a decrease in the arrests that were warrants that were actually served where we had wanted people that we had stopped. And actually, uh, our assault arrests were the greatest increase there too. The report I did Thursday night, I won't go back through every single thing, but uh, one of the things that I did was go through and compare Laverne's crime rates last year or 2010 to the preliminary of 2011. And just to hit some of those high, high points again, the overall crime rate, Group A offenses that were reported in 2011 actually dropped 6.6 percent. They dropped from 2,168 in 2010 to 2024 in 2011. Homicides were unchanged. We had two in both years. Robbery was down 38.9%. Kidnapping and abduction was down 37.5%. Uh, Reports of assault, aggravated and simple, increased by 30 
uh, or 6.7 percent, but the domestic related assaults is where we got our big kick on that, and that was an increase of 25.8 percent or 288 reported in 2011. The reported rapes decreased 43.8 percent. Uh, burglaries in all categories increased 1.3 percent, but at the same time, the arrests for burglary increased 100 percent in 2011 from 2010. Motor vehicle thefts decreased 14.9 percent. Thefts uh, from a motor vehicle decreased 46.4 percent. And then all other thefts dropped 15.7 percent. And once again, I'll remind you that, as always, the credit goes to the men and women of the LPD that are out there working very hard every day for these citizens that we all serve. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Good job. Rescue. Mayor Alderman. <clears throat> we had two medical calls, 16 motor vehicle accidents, one traffic assist, and 16, I mean, 62 standbys. We had three business meetings, three training sessions, uh, four public relation events, and four miscellaneous other calls. To, uh, total events were 95. We had 2,069 miles driven this month uh, with 1,404 uh, hours. Total average time going to these calls was five minutes and we also have a ham breakfast this Saturday. So hope to see everybody come out. Sounds good. Any questions? Thank you. Right, thank you. Codes? <coughs> Mayor Alderman, for the month of January, the Coast Department issued two single-family dwelling permits, one commercial permit, one miscellaneous permit, three sign permits, one garage or shed permit, four other permits for a total number of 12. For complaints, we responded to eight complaints of junk cars and yards, 21 complaints on trash, and 30 other complaints. Now, revenues. For impact fees for road, we had $1,768. Park, $622. Police, $224. And the monthly mm -hmm. revenue with impact fees was $7,609.81. Good job. Any questions? Thank you. Parks? Good evening, Mayor Alderman. Um, our monthly report for January is typical of this time of year. Our numbers are not uh, not that high because our you know our activities are low, um, but uh, we have generated some revenue, um, some minimal events and whatnot. Um, but we are getting busy. Our softball and baseball signups are are underway. Um, I would like to take this opportunity. We're blessed to have um, Cassidy Doors. If you could stand up for us, please. Some of you who came out to the Christmas and the New Year uh, Thanksgiving may have seen Cassidy. She is our intern uh, from MTSU, and we just wanted to recognize her, thank her for all of her hard work over the last um, few months, and she'll be graduating in May from MTSU with a bachelor's degree in child development and family studies. So I just want to take the opportunity to thank you for working with us. And she just got engaged. Really? That's yeah. news to me. <laughs> well, very good. Welcome, Cassidy. Thank you for Any questions here. of me? No. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Finance. Good afternoon, Mayor and Alderman. Tonight's report represents uh, first half of our fiscal year, 11-12, ending in the month of December. For the general fund, uh, expenses have exceeded revenues by approximately $165,000. Uh, local sales tax collections, uh, we have collected year-to-date almost $1.8 million. That's uh, $68,000 better than what we budgeted at this time and $75,000 um, better than what uh, we had received at this time last year. In the State Street Aid Fund, revenues have exceeded expenses by $204,000. In the Stormwater Fund, revenues have exceeded expenses by $160,000. And in our water sewer fund, revenues have exceeded expenses by approximately $744,000. On the second page is our balances in our various uh, bank accounts. For the general fund, we have $2.2 million. 
In State Street Aid, we have 1.3. In the Senior Citizens Fund, we have approximately 55,000. In the Drug Fund, we have approximately 43,000. In the Library Fund, we have approximately 184,000. In our Grant Fund, we have approximately 66,000. In our Stormwater Fund, we have approximately $2 million. In our Capital Projects, Highways and Streets, we have approximately 3.8 million, with 3.2 of that being reserved for Walden Road. In our uh, capital projects uh, fund, Parks and Rec, we have approximately uh, $15,000. And in our police impact fund, we have approximately $90,000. In our water sewer fund, we have a balance of approximately $6.5 million, with 3.2 of that going to Waldron Road. And in our employee benefits fund, our internal service fund, uh, we have approximately uh, $15,000 at the end of December. Um, on the third page is a comparison to prior year. For the general fund, uh, revenues uh, have, had, have exceeded expenses by approximately a million dollars as compared to the prior year. And in our water sewer fund, revenues have exceeded ex expenses by approximately $1.5 million. Any questions? And all departments have done a really good job. Yes, yes, I was very good job. I was reviewing them today, getting ready for the budgets, and everybody is uh, either under budget or, you know, <coughs> either right on it. Any questions? Thank you so much. Thank you. Library. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor and Alderman. In January 2012, the library checked out 8,839 items. We had 8,811 patrons visit the library last month with an average per day of 401. And we issued 23 new juvenile and 137 new adult cards last month. We ran 39 programs in January with a total attendance of 532. And we had 2,786 people come in to use our computers. Not only was January the start of the new year, uh, it brought new paint to the library. It looks beautiful, it's clean, it's bright, and a lot of that uh, is in part due in part to the efforts of the staff. They moved probably two-thirds of the materials we house in the library in addition to the furniture that houses it. Um, so if you see one of the library staff members, <coughs> thank them. Um, they're bruised, they're battered, they're exhausted. They did it all without complaining, and I'm, I'm really proud of them. We have a couple of big events in the near future. On Monday, tickets for the American Girl Tea Party will become available. And this year we're featuring Marie Grace and Cecile, who lived in New Orleans in the mid-19th century. And the Tea Party will have a masquerade theme. Ms. Janice has been working very hard in the event and has come up with a really fun craft and refreshments that are specific to the setting of the books. Um, and as usual, one lucky attendee will come home with either a Marie Grace or a Cecile doll. The adult staff have also been putting their heads together to come up with really fun things for our patrons. Um, we've got a contest that started this past Monday. We call it Steam the Gears of Your Mind. Uh, the contest asks that you come up with an art project um, based on steampunk, which is a subgenre of sci-fi fantasy type novels. And Wikipedia describes steampunk with the slogan, what the past would look like if the future had happened sooner. So we're talking about anachronistic, um, like a cell phone in mid-Victorian England, things of that nature. Um, entries may be two or three dimensional, and we will accept them through March 31st. And all the rules and more de details about the contest are available at the library or on our website. Are there any questions for me? And also, this is Black History Month. It is. We have and, a display. And uh, the library has a wonderful display with many books. Mm -hmm. and DVDs, all. audiobooks, so all kinds of things. So please go visit them during this time too. Thank you. Water treatment plan. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman Broker. Uh, <clears throat> what we have is our monthly summary for the month of December of this year comparatively to the uh, month of December 2010. Um, <clears throat> What comes out noticeable is our, our reduction in water processed, and we're still attributing that to the, the main leak that was found on off of Mason Road. So it reflects in everything there. Uh, the water production is down, uh, and it, it goes in relevance with our chemical usage being down. Uh, it looks we have had right about a five thousand dollar savings from from year to year because of the reduction there and the, the cost of the, the chemicals. Um, 
Our maintenance for December was just under $10,000. <coughs> Next month will be the end of the maintenance cap on our January summary, so I'll have a better summary of how it was used and uh, what all we accomplished with the, the balance there. Uh, on our quality calls, we had seven calls for pressure. We had zero for taste and odor during the month. Uh, our rainfall collected was about four and a half inches with 10 different rain events during the month. Uh, the cross-connection program still going well with $1,880 collected in, in uh, inspection fees for the month. Our lagoons in day seven of cleaning, and they're making progress. Uh, it's it's going slower than I would expected, but uh, it's it's still making progress every day with it. And he's hopefully planning on finishing up Friday, so we'll be excited. Good. Any questions? Thank yeah. you. Public works. <clears throat> Mayor Alderman, good evening. In our sewer group, we saw in January 133 work orders. That's one more than last month. The uh, sewer department overtime was at 105, which is 30 hours more than last month, uh, with an equal split across four uh, categories there. Uh, we had a primary uh, issue at Lindhurst uh, on a sewer stoppage that required us to bring in a contractor and special equipment beyond internal capability. We spent a lot of time out on the road on that one, had to close down the road for a day or so. Uh, in the water department, we saw 147 work orders, which is 47 more work orders than in December. And we attribute that generally to just cold weather and primarily residential service lines popping. Uh, new meter sets, A, we had zero in last month. Two uh, major water line leaks or breaks, uh, one on Murfreesboro Road and another on Stones River. A lot of you attended that night with us out there. And then 100, pardon me, I missed the label, but that was uh, Tennessee one calls on the water side. Uh, the water department saw 38 uh, overtime hours, uh, 31 of those for on call and seven on service calls. Uh, the street department saw 144 chipper pickups, which was 61 more than last month. Uh, we used the workhouse program to the tune of uh, 227 hours, which was 60 more than last month. Um, special projects about two-thirds way down the list we uh, spread some snow one evening we, some salt one evening we had snow uh, we uh, attended the I-24 accident a couple of Saturdays ago and then uh, we put in some binder at uh, Laverne Lane getting us really our first uh, internal um, efforts in a long time at putting hot mix down in the, in the winter for road repair uh, fleet maintenance, uh, we 13 uh, repairs, two of which were major. One was minor, the other's in the middle. That's 11 fewer than uh, in uh, December. So a good story there is that we didn't have as many cars generally breaking down in, in January as we did December. Tires, batteries, and brakes are all off by about one each to last month, give or take either direction. Special projects in fleet. Uh, dump truck takeoff gearbox. We uh, fixed a uh, dump truck that we were literally using a rock as a parking brake on the public works yard. Uh, so we fixed that last month, uh, too. You know, I like to talk wind, so I'm going to do that now. Um, in January in the sewer uh, area, we avoided roughly a $5,000 bypass pump expense on Lynnhurst by using our internal tooling to drain the line, pump it in a down, uh, downstream sewer manhole over and over and over through that Lindhurst break. And this was there again, just an in-house effort to avoid cost. Uh, we found a, an inflow issue on Bill Stewart Drive, item number two, that, uh, oh, my, okay. So what we did there on that one was we took about three million gallons of sewer flow out by finding one simple inflow uh, scenario there. Two, uh, I asked you in the retreat to help me um, um, possibly go after equipment that helps us do what we call repair in place in the sewer line. And what we did is we tested some equipment in the field, some demo equipment out of a vendor who was nice enough to uh, give us their expertise and we were able to repair that line avoiding about a $2,600 expense. In the old school way, we would have dunk, dug the sewer line out of the street and repaired. So we used some newfangled technology, if you will. It cost us a lot less. There was a lot less downtime in the sewer system on uh, Bill Stewart for that. Uh, Jerry Zimlow began uh, with Robert's help, uh, Robert Brooks's help, 
the construction of his uh, repair center. You guys um, approved that a couple of months ago. So we're as far along as pouring concrete there. Now we've connected the water and the sewer line to, to get it up and, and running. And this is to avoid uh, the service and labor, labor expense out of Wascon, who is our grinder pump vendor. So we're going to be doing that work in-house once this work is complete. Uh, Jerry started one of his two new sewer operators in January, and the other one starts this week. Uh, in the water area, we demoed a piece of equipment that we wanted for a long time. We call it a mini excavator. It's essentially a small scale um, backhoe over at David's Way. Uh, typically speaking, we'd go out on a water leak and we would dig up a hunk of yard and it would just be a massive cleanup expense once we're, once we're done making the repair. With this smaller scale piece of equipment, it disturbs far less of the, the yard generally, the customer's yard, the sidewalk, whatever. Uh, so we use that piece of equipment. We're going to ask you in a month or so to uh, approve that purchase, which is budgeted. Um, but we're demoing that equipment now on the water end. Uh, we're set to begin now interviews for our one open labor position. As you know, Garland Russell left the water area to become the supervisor in the streets, thereby opening a position in the water group. And one thing I'm pretty proud of, and Robert is too, and those of you who are out there and attending the uh, Stones River water leak uh, from a couple of weeks ago, we improved our response time greatly in that we're now um, rallying the equipment and kind of in convoy fashion getting to the scene instead of getting there and making the call throughout. So that for those of you that help with traffic control and that kind of thing, it was made a little bit easier for you guys because we had all the equipment in the train going that way, PD helping us get there too. So um, that, that was a good win for the, in the month uh, for water. In streets, um, we demoed an asphalt roller, particularly up on Laverne Lane. We're quoting that piece of equipment now, again, an approved, or excuse me, a budgeted item for this year. Uh, but we're demoing uh, that and similar equipment in the streets group. Again, we started the binder fill on Laverne Lane. Uh, if I understand correctly, Mr. Russell has another several tons of that stuff uh, coming our way in, in, in the next few business days to go into other areas of, of need out in the district. At the I-24 lighting project, the uh, poles have been ordered, so we're well on our way to getting back into TDOT compliance there. We again, we helped with the accident uh, a couple of Saturdays ago in 24. We appointed Garland Russell as a supervisor, and we made a project uh, priority list for the winning asphalt bidder, and we'll see that in just a minute. Uh, Bruce, if you would. Next one. Okay. Um, from the retreat, you'll remember this slide. Uh, these are the top 10 or so asphalt priorities. We'll be asking you a little bit later on to approve the asphalt bid. And these are the intentions. Uh, this is where we uh, choose to go based on need. We did some uh, traffic count uh, assimilation along with uh, customer complaint data to build this list. So it truly is the public determining the priority here. If we're able to get these done by end of June, we have another list of roads, Silver Birch, Rolling Wood, Oakwood, Cove, Woodland Hills, primarily in Woodland Hills, and then uh, the intersection of Stones River Road and Murfreesboro Road, followed by Mason Circle off of Stones River will be the next set of priority uh, uh, attacks for us on streets. Uh, so there again, uh, the consent agenda items A1 through 3 are all public works related only. They're asphalt, service trucks, and water meters, and we'll be asking you in a little while to approve those. That's all I've got. Any questions? Any questions? Good job. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Human Resources. Good evening, Mayor Vice Mayor and Alderman Broker. Uh, for the month of January, we uh, posted four jobs. We had 80 external applications for that. We, uh, in, we promoted two employees. Uh, one of them men, uh, mentioned earlier. Also want to make note of Derek Beard, who is officially our codes director. He's been doing, doing that work unofficially for some time, but he's accepted that. Uh, also in January, we had two resignations, uh, no uh, actual termination. Uh, as far as claims management and risk management, uh, we, uh, we were able to actually close an old litigation uh, matter, the, the Holly matter, uh, which was a false claim against the city, the police department, and three of our officers. We added one new claim. Uh, along the same line, we think that uh, if we're fortunate, we'll be able to get summary judgment and get that claim closed. It'll take some time, but we feel confident with, uh, with the facts of that case. And I didn't do that, but I like the cause of stir. 
um, we're continuing to manage uh, the other the other remaining claims and keep a uh, look at that. We're doing a better job of meeting with the outside council and uh, and taking care of uh, the things that we need to need to do. So we'll continue to keep you updated. Uh, also, as far as employee and family wellness, uh, we had 72 care here appointments in the month of January. Uh, we had uh, we have 57 employees uh, that have enrolled in 72 of their family members. That number is up from 92 to 129 and growing, uh, getting some positive comments. And, and that's going to be one of the ways that we're going to be able to effectively impact our, uh, our uh, claim dollars for 2012. So we hope that we'll continue to get, get there. Uh, we really need that number to be up uh, 200 plus, and we're going to continue to drive to do that, maybe come up with some incentives to do that. Uh, as far as lives covered, uh, under our health and welfare, we got uh, dependent lives about right under 300 employee lives. Uh, really, that's about one, uh, 159. Uh, so, uh, and then long-term disability applications. We had one employee that had been out for some time that was not able to return to work, and we were uh, able to help him not only uh, apply for long-term disability through uh, through the insurance that the city provides, but also through an outside uh, employer as well. Uh, and that's it. I uh, have no, no news on claim, claim dollars because it's the end of the year, so it may be another 30 days before we have some real dollars there. Good job. Thank, Thank you. At this time, I do believe we may have a little emergency. These guys may be leaving. So we're gonna alter the plans here just a little bit so these guys can be, I think we have some presentations. So you want me? So, Ricky, we're going to let you go, and let's get these, I think, Chief, are you, I don't know, are you in with this one? Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll get these done before these guys have to run out. <laughs> All right. For the citizens and the other employees and everyone that's here tonight, a lot of times people don't understand the team work that we have with, from our employees here at the city with our contracted fire service, from our box 100 volunteers to our Laverne Rescue Unit that are, is compiled with volunteers, our police department, our citizens of this town. Uh, tonight we're going to give out a few certificates of appreciation and all of the people that are going to come up here tonight are employees, or contracted services, or volunteers, or citizens from this fine town we live in here. If I could at this time, from the Laverne Fire Department, if I could have Lieutenant Matt Benaski, Lieutenant Alan McCormick, Firefighter Chris Atkin, Firefighter Nora Ritz. Nora is also a newest, uh, newest member of our fire department. <coughs> Nora was just hired uh, a little over a week ago. He was actually doing the duties of the uh, incident commander on this event I'm going to talk to you about uh, with the Amical Volunteer Fire Department on the uh, on the night that this occurred, so we're glad to have him on board. <clears throat> From the Laverne Police Department, Officer Lewis Powell. Lewis not here. From the Laverne Rescue Squad, Chief Dana Blair, <clears throat> Captain Chris Smith, Lieutenant Anthony Honeycutt, Lieutenant Megan Chapman, Troy Murray, Jesse DeYoung, Chris Cunningham, and Allison Carey. I'm going to skip around a little bit on here. Y'all can stand over here. I don't bite. <laughs> <laughs> From our public works department, Street Supervisor Garland Russell, Lloyd Atkins, David Ward, and Doug Oakley. You stand by me, Garland. <laughs> From Box 100, Chief Julia Hill, Tommy Gupton, Tommy Bonetta, Lord Davidson, and our mayor, Stephen Mosley. And also, if I could, citizen and easy towing tow truck driver, John <coughs> Murray. <laughs> we get all these people up here today, as I said, these are employees, citizens, volunteers, all from the burn. And this certificate of appreciation is being granted to, to all these fine people for actions taken on January 28th of this year 
in response to a major traffic traffic accident on Interstate 24 as a mutual aid call just inside of Smyrna, Tennessee. The city hereby thanks you for your hard work and dedication to our community. We'd like to thank every one of you. We're going to let Chief, Chief, we've got our mayor, <laughs> Sam Mosley, present a, a second portion of this as well. We'll move on to that. Okay, we're going to do that while these are up here. Okay, we're going to do this real quick. Okay. And I'm going to tell a real funny story because we all showed up. I, that was the first time I've ever been on a scene on Interstate. And I'm going to be honest with you, I was terrified. And all I could hear was my husband saying, stay against the wall, stay against the wall. And then they got to talking about on this scene, they were talking about that some man just stopped and pulled the truck driver out. So we were all up there talking, going, well, man, we wish we could find out who this was. We, you know, need to thank him. They said nobody knew who it was at the time. And then it shows on TV, Easy Toe, John Murray, Laverne, Tennessee. And I'm like, yes, Laverne, at it again. So with that being said, City of Laverne Certificate of Appreciation is hereby granted to John Murray for life-saving actions that were taken on January 28, 2012 that resulted in the rescue of the driver involved in a major traffic accident on Interstate 24 in Smyrna, Tennessee. The city hereby thanks you for your hard work and dedication to our community given this seventh day of February 2012. Thank you so much. Again, this shows what Laverne is all about, people. These people right here and citizens stopping to do what's needed to be done to save somebody else's life. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. There's a couple of people that weren't recognized. Okay. There was also an ACP transport driver that stopped on the scene. Oh, okay. A tanker truck driver that stopped on the scene, and we all three together. That man. Well, we maybe we can get those names, and they maybe are they were they out of state or from around here? I have no idea they moved on, and I didn't get there. Wow, that's awesome! Again, somebody stopping to help fellow man. So, thank you, thank you very much. So that, and just so y'all know, the truck was on fire when all this was transpiring. So it wasn't that it was just a wrecked truck. The truck was had exploded and was on fire. So, <laughs> Well, they all went the other way. Y'all just don't want to be around me, do you? <laughs> Thank all y'all. Welcome. <laughs> Thank all of y'all. <laughs> all right, that's fun. Next to the a lot of fun, I have a beautiful young lady. That if she could come forward, please, Miss Taylor Lawton. Miss Taylor is on the dance team and is in the drama club at Roy Waldron. Well, they recently went to Atlanta, help me with the story, and were in, was in competition. Their group did very well. However, Miss Taylor did a choreograph, a dance all by herself. She entered the competition. She won first place. So, that is awesome. Good job. So, tell me, Laverne don't know how to do it. Also, we have with her tonight, her drama teacher, Ms. and I'm going to make sure, drama is Miss O'Keefe. Okay. okay. And then dance, Miss Barnes. They are here supporting Taylor tonight. <laughs> and also she has Taylor's family, grandma, mom, dad, aunt, I think brothers, cousins, so everybody wave. <laughs> All right, we're going to get to the fun part.
the City of Laverne Certificate of Appreciation is hereby granted to Taylor Lawton for receiving the Best Student Choreographer Award at the Junior Theater Festival in Atlanta, Georgia. The City of Laverne hereby congratulates Taylor for her hard work and determination in achieving this award given this seventh day of February 2012. Now when you become a star, do I get your first autograph? <laughs> Thank you so much, sweetie. We're so proud of you. Good job, good job. Thank y'all for coming. <laughs> okay. Now, we have an uh, uh, employee of the month for December. This employee was very, very sick and had to have surgery at the time and could not be with us. So we would now like to recognize Miss Tiffany Taylor. Where did Tiffany go? <laughs> for all the hard work, Tiffany, if you see all the beautiful decorations, this is her brainchild. She loves to decorate. And I think now she's conned Tammy into coming in and helping her too. <laughs> and uh, all the floats, she, they, she and Tammy both work very, very hard with the floats for the, the Miss Laverne pageant winners. They do all of that with these girls, keep these girls occupied. They work very hard and do all this on their own time, not to mention her regular job that she does very well in the water department. City of Laverne Certificate of Appreciation is hereby granted to Tiffany Taylor for your dedication and hard work for the City of Laverne. The city hereby recognizes you as the Employee of the Month for December 2011 and thanks you for the excellent work you do for the City of Laverne. Given this sixth day of December, which is actually supposed to be the 7th of February 2012, but sorry you were sick, but glad you're back. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay. February again? That was the big, uh, that was the big group. That was the big group. Okay. I think we're done now. Oh, Chief, you're next. I almost forgot you. See, it was Tom last time. It's the Chief this time. <laughs> My group's not as big as that last group. <laughs> Me to hold them for you. And not as pretty as the last one either. <laughs> There's a uh, group of people at Laverne Police Department that are there 24 7, 365. And they're always there keeping an eye on things and watching after things and absolutely. Uh, are the unsung heroes. And as you all know, um, I've been doing a unit citation. And this is a group that's a really special group. They take care of all of us, literally all of us, anybody that lives inside this city, and even some that don't. But uh, a few of them are here tonight. A lot of them couldn't be here, but dispatchers. Cindy, if you would come up with them and help me out. <laughs> Lieutenant Murphy, if you would come up with me. <coughs> help me out with this. We have two that are actually working that couldn't come over because they're answering the phones. <laughs> but these, these men and women in dispatch handle those calls. They're extreme professionals. And they're there taking care of watching after us and watching after you too every single day and they get thousands of calls every year and they handle them and they take care of things and they make sure we're all safe. But the Chief's Unit Citation presented to the LPD Dispatch, Andrea White, Benjamin Hunt, Candace Elmore, Cynthia Munoz, Davis Morgan, Gary House, King Criswell, Kevin Rowland, Priscilla P. West, and Zach Kirsch. Each and every day as members of the Laverne Police Department's elite dispatch group, you handle the most serious and dangerous emergency calls with the utmost professionalism and competency. Your work is, quote, second to none, end quote. You are the unsung heroes that nobody ever sees, but who reap the benefits of your care, concern, and compassion. All of you are definitely the alpha tango of emergency telecommunicators. 
And on behalf of the PD and the citizens, thank you all. Now, the non-sworn employee of the month, as you all well know, they have their parking place behind the PD. And um, they get it for a month. And this one happens to be somebody that just walked away, but Pete, would you come up a minute, please? <laughs> <laughs> Priscilla introduces herself on the telephone at 2 o'clock in the morning. Hey, Chief, this is P. West. I guess it's easier to say P than Priscilla, but that's okay. We tease her about that. We kid her about it. But Priscilla is an awesome employee. She's, she's been there and really gets in the middle of things. But Priscilla, P, in parentheses, West, you are hereby selected as the non-sworn employee of the month for January 2012 as a result of your dedication, your willingness to assist officers at any time, your relentless <laughs> efforts searching for information to ensure the safety of officers, and your, quote, cool, calm, and collected, in quote, demeanor in the midst of emergencies. Your professionalism, integrity, and your attention to detail are traits that every employee should strive to attain. Thank you for all you do. For all of us to help keep us safe. Now I had a I had a hard time with the sworn officer of the month uh, or sworn employee, which is the officer of the month, because we've got uh, two young men that work very hard, uh, different shifts, different hours a day. And uh, both of them, in November, had incidents. And I was trying to figure out how I could recognize both of them. So I thought, oh, well, they work different shifts so they can share the parking space. They're not going to butt heads <laughs> with each other. But uh, the, the first one to recognize is uh, Officer William Watson. Officer William Watson, Will, as a result of your alert and quick action, you determined a pedestrian on the Jefferson Pike Railroad Bridge was attempting to commit suicide by jumping. Through several minutes of compassionate conversation, you were able to convince the subject this was not the answer and prevented him from taking his own life. For these professional law enforcement actions you took to save a life, you are hereby selected as the Officer of the Month for January 2012. Congratulations. <laughs> and he did. He literally saved that man's life because he was on patrol and saw it and stopped and, and took care of the situation and help came, but he actually was able to talk him back and talk him down. Officer Mike Cannon. In November, Mike responded to an incident on I-24 to assist THP. And uh, he got out there and he assisted with uh, traffic control and, and uh, helped get some things done. And there were two men that were in the vehicle that, that had wrecked that were more than just crash victims. They really weren't hurt, but they were victims in another sense. We just didn't know it. Mike put them in his car and transported them back down to Pilot for them to call to get someone to come get them. There was a tremendous language barrier. And these men were here in the country legally, but they had trouble speaking where a country boy like Mike could understand, much less <laughs> someone else. But uh, these gentlemen spoke a language that's extremely rare, and it was very hard to try to find someone. But through his efforts in recognizing there was a major problem, there, there was something going on that wasn't right, he brought them on over to the police department. Uh, we were able to locate someone who could speak their language, 
and came and found out that these two men had been kidnapped. They had been um, taken to a bank and withdrawn money, so they were robbed, and they were being held in that vehicle when it wrecked, and the other two guys took off after the wreck occurred, but Mike was able to secure them, and through the work he did, the investigation he did, we were able to solve a crime, a major crime, against two men that I'm sure they thought this was the worst country in the world, but they realized in, in the long run that American law enforcement is what it's supposed to be, and that's trying to help others. So Mike, you responded to assist THP on a traffic crash on I-24. After transporting two subjects off the interstate, you alertly determined they were victims of a crime and initiated an investigation. Your professional and alert actions, as well as your attention to detail, solved the kidnapping and robbery case out of Metro, and a return visit to the scene produced critical evidence, and it did. For your professional law enforcement actions you took to right or wrong, you were hereby selected as the Officer of the Month for January 2012, but now you and Will have to share that space, so don't <laughs> butt heads, all right? <laughs> Got one more thing I want to tell you about. One of the things that that occurred this past winter, first part of winter, was the opportunity I had to work with a whole lot of people here. Not only was LPD involved, FOP, but also LFD and the Foundation and Box 100 and uh, many many citizens as well as PAL and rescue did help not particularly with this part but they were helping one of the local churches but through the generosity of businesses and many many citizens in our community we were able to provide Christmas for kids to 164 children out of 104 families and provided them 91 boxes of food for the holidays. So thank you to all of you who helped. I appreciate you, and God bless every one of you. It's hard to top all of that now. <laughs> all right, down to business. All right, first on the agenda is the consent agenda. At the workshop, we discussed all items on the consent agenda thoroughly. Do I have a motion to approve or to deny the consent agenda items? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Next, under new business, we have appoint board members. <coughs> Mr. Graham Coates' term on the airport authority expires in March. This appointment has to be approved by the Rutherford County and the town of Smyrna before he will be appointed back to this board. Mr. Coates is very interested on remaining on this board. And um, do we need to vote on him on that one? Wouldn't hurt. Okay. So let's go on. I make a motion that we appoint uh, Graham Coates back to the airport authority. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Next is the Board of Zoning Appeals. The two terms for Mr. Graham Coates and Craig Pollock have expired, and they do wish to remain on this board. So do I have a motion to make a motion uh, to keep them? I have a motion to keep both Mr. Coates and Mr. Pollock. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 This uh, next one is the Construction Board of Adjustment and Appeals. Both Mr. David Waldron and Mr. Kevin Rowland's terms have expired, and I do believe both of those men do wish to remain on this board. Do I have a motion to retain them? Motion to return. Motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
We have one position on the Greenway Advisory Committee, that of Mr. Mark Dodd. Um, Mr. Dodd does wish to remain on the Greenway Advisory Committee. Do I have a motion to keep Mr. Dodd? Motion to retain. Motion to retain. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next, we have Senior Citizens Advisory Committee appointment. Mr. Don Lear and Mr. Mary Jane Skinner, uh, terms are up, and they both wish to remain on the Seniors Advisory Committee. Do I have a motion to retain these two? Motion to retain. I have a motion to retain. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number six, first reading, Ordinance 2012-1, an ordinance to amend Title 13 of the Laverne Municipal Code regarding property main maintenance regulations. Motion. This is the first reading. Motion to approve. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number seven, first reading, Ordinance 2012-02, an ordinance to amend Title 15, Chapter 6, of the Verne Municipal Code regarding parking. Do I have a motion to approve or to deny? Motion to approve. I have a second. motion to approve. Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number eight, resolution 2012-02, a resolution to amend the personnel rules and regulations regarding business meals and fuel card use. Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Number nine, first reading, ordinance 2012-03, an ordinance to amend the 2011-2012 fiscal year general fund budget and capital plan for parks and recreation mowers. Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? A second, but I have a little discussion here. Okay. Um, this is the first reading we'll read next month. Will this give us adequate time to have those mowers by April, end of March? Okay. Okay. And this will have a public hearing next month. Okay. Any more discussion? No, I, but I do want to say this is in lieu of something that was uh, currently on last year's five-year plan, which was taken off, as well as Parks and Rec also has put some um, uh, surplus, surplus uh, on gov deal. So this is you more than made up for it. Yeah. Okay. Good point. All right. I have a motion and I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number ten. Motion to approve bid for police department vehicles. Do we have to pick one? We're just approving the bid, or are we picking one of the three? Um, we need to make, in the motion, it needs to be which one you choose, yes. Make a motion for Ford of Murfreesboro. Okay, I have a motion for the Ford of Murfreesboro bid. Do I have a second? I'll second. Sec okay. okay. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll second it. Okay, now, uh, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Again, I think it needs to be brought out. This was last year's budget. Mm -hmm. This was something that we voted on last year. Uh, and it looks as if we're just purchasing 20, 26 new police cars or, or leasing them. Um, but in reality, it's, it's more of a cost-saving measure. Um, uh, Chief, I think you said at the workshop probably 2002, 2003 was probably the average uh, vehicle um, somewhere uh, in that ballpark. Sorry. Actually, uh, I apologize for that. Actually, when I was looking through everything that's there, um, there are about 20 vehicles that are at least um, 12 years old. Many of the vehicles we have in the fleet are non-police package vehicles that were used when they were purchased. And I believe uh, Felicia told me we spent 61,000 plus 61,578 since the 1st of July just on major maintenance on patrol vehicles. Wow. 
and that's that's what's hurting. And, and last year was something like two hundred eighty thousand something, and the total cost of this lease package, just these, do we have that? So basically, we're going to two three years. We're going to be pretty close with newer vehicles while we were paying already. And just maintenance alone. So okay. So I have a motion and I have a second. Is there any further discussion? Any further discussion? With that being said, let's do a roll call. Vice Mayor? Aye. Alderman Broker? Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. All right. Now we're down to our Mayor and Alderman comments. Alderman Broker? Um, I think you touched on in the beginning. Keep uh, Alderman Waldron in your prayers. Um, Okay, everything's okay there. Um, and again, I just want to thank all the departments for their hard work and, and for their, uh, um, all the information during the retreat process. Um, we're going to start something here in a couple of days that's going to be, I believe, a very difficult job. We are yeah, limited good. funds. We have, uh, we have to certainly have to prioritize, like we said, so <coughs> it's going to be a tough job. It is, and they've done a real good job on prioritizing in those departments. Vice Mayor? Well, we want to wish you a belated birthday. Had a birthday Friday, and I'm glad to see you're back feeling better. Welcome. Again, thanks to all the department heads for all the work you've done. Um, these next few months have been, or the last couple of months, trying to get the budgets prepared and trying to get ready for the new year. And uh, we, we really appreciate, huh? I don't know what he's trying to tell me. Oh ham breakfast you can tell he always wants to eat <laughs> do remember the ham breakfast at the rescue squad on saturday i want to thank each and every one of you in attendance tonight thank all of you for coming out being interested in the community we are glad to have you here we want to thank you again john for all that you and easy towing does for the city appreciate you appreciate all of you thank you and i'm going to call this meeting adjourned